Bonds. This lady is amazing, and she's also dynamic, and she's also my friend. She's a Forbes 30 under 30 social entrepreneur, top 50 women in tech in Germany 2021, top 100 women in Germany 2020, Marshall Memorial Fellow 2021, 2022, and I've only gone through one third of all the amazing things that she has done. She's absolutely amazing, and hopefully we'll have a chance to ask her some questions. So if we can just pop up that QR code. Again, we're running late on time, but we did want to make this interactive. So if you scan that with your phone right now, then a wheel, that'll take you to Slido, and we can ask a question to the founder and the CEO of Plan A. So she's going to tell you a little bit about what she's doing with corporates, why this matters to her. I got to meet her as a responsible leader in the BMW Foundation, so I get the special right to take her very long name and call her just Lou. So please welcome Lou. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Hello everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and tell you a bit more about why I think whatever you're building also has to have a bit of a sustainable element to it. Before I dive into actual theory about why this matters, I want to tell you a bit more about my story in terms of how I kicked off my own journey. I'm not someone that has studied sustainability, I've not worked into the field, but I stumbled upon it because of serendipity or whatever you would call it. All because I actually, in 2016, decided to become a surfer. Or to be a bit more precise, I decided to go on a trip with some friends, where essentially we were going to learn how to surf. Some people were going to be surfing because they knew how to do it. Um, long story short, on the first day of this trip, what I ended up seeing, instead of this beautiful beach, which is what essentially shows up when you look up surfing in Morocco, uh, was this. I found myself on this beach with uh, a lot of concern, but also a bit of a perplexion because I didn't quite understand how a place that was economically benefiting from the beauty of nature, from the resources that were available for it, was essentially taken care of in this particular manner. Within one hour of being on this beach, I ended up collecting that much trash. I don't know if it feels like a lot, but it was essentially a lot of little evidences of existence of human. And this was shoes, clothes, uh, different little pieces of uh, construction site materials and many others. I wasn't particularly clear on what this necessarily meant for me because at that point of time, I was working in FinTech in London. Uh, I had just left my investment banking job to be doing uh, what I was finding cooler. Um, and ended up with this problem at hand, thinking that probably there's something more that I could be doing with my time than simply using my business degree and making myself um, kind of more prominent in a space that was picking up a lot. For one whole year, I spent on the side of my job, uh, my time on educating myself about climate change. It was this intrinsic need for me to dive into a topic that was making me probably more engaged with something that I clearly didn't get. I went back to London after this trip and the city seemed like quite dirty. Uh, it also seemed quite unprepared for what was ahead of us uh, when it came to the facts related to climate change. So in 2017, I decided to take the leap and I left my job. I left my job with a lot of concern for my friends uh, who were essentially saying, wait, this is sustainability. This kind of, is, are you joining an NGO? Are you building an NGO? Um, 2017 was not the time when there was a lot of buzz around Fridays for Future, Greta, or any of these elements that we consider today connected to the topic of sustainability. And I did what we all do when we get excited about a topic. I bought a lot of books, listened to a lot of podcasts, and also educated myself in any shape and form that it was possible. Spoke to a lot of academics from my school in London, um, also connected to some groups. Um, there was not too many at that point in London, but it definitely was enough of information for me to know that there was this huge challenge ahead of us. 
After all this education, I decided to do some experiments. Uh, I'm sure many of you, uh, as, as far as I saw from the questions that were answered by all of you, there's a lot of you that are building companies and are delving into different experiments to figure out what is exactly you want to be doing. My first experiment was essentially to compare data that was related to climate change issues and the funding that was going into that. Long story short, there was no positive correlation whatsoever. Second experiment, interviewing 300 people um, and predominantly investment bankers and management consultants, which was what essentially was my audience in London, and only to find out climate change was no one's priority. No one thought that this was the responsibility that they needed to take. And on top of that, people were not necessarily informed of what was the correlation between their existence and climate change altogether. Long story short, what this ended up uh, doing was allowing me to define three theses that have been the premises of building my company. First one was that businesses had to be at the core of addressing climate change. The second one was that we needed to be focusing on science, and science was not at all being followed at that point, but conveniently was hiding a lot of different solutions within it. And finally, it was all about collaboration. Climate change was never going to be addressed if it was not about all of us working together from the different stakeholder hats that we had, be it businesses, be it NGOs, be it scientists, be it citizens. Three years down the line, we are now a software company that has developed a product that is in the hands of a lot of large entities enabling them to process complex data, that is giving them visibility on their ESG performance and then teaching them how to improve it and finally supporting them to report according to different standards. We work with all these amazing companies and many, many more, um, but essentially we have been able to achieve within a few years a lot of what in 2016 didn't seem to be possible in the sense that there was not even a mindset shift at that point of time about why climate change mattered at all. And today, I would like to tell you a bit more of what is your role and responsibility in building companies with a mindset that can then not only address the issue that you have in mind, that is the problem that you're to talking and taking as a big challenge, but also be a solution for the societal issues that we have ahead of us, which are quite a few. Let's first define a few elements. What is the difference between role and responsibility? Role is something that you're given. Uh, it's a label. It could be that you're the CEO, you're the CPO, you're the product manager, you're the intern. And in terms of the responsibilities that you have, this normally is something that fits within a job description, but uh, quite often is something you can add yourself. You can claim responsibility, you can decide what is the responsibility you would like to have. So, what is first the role of technology and companies that are developing different technologies for solving really big or small issues that we have? The first one is related to optimization of processes. All of us are working towards making something more efficient. Data collection, um, gathering photos, then analyzing them in a very efficient manner without having to use any humans. But within this equa equation, there's been actually historically an element missing because we've always been optimizing processes for cost. Maybe an opportunity for a role to be taken. The second one is related to resource management. Many companies that are in the tech sector are focusing its efforts on finding the ways to optimize the different resources that are within the cycle and then closing the loop. But the closing of the loop is also not something that necessarily is always in the minds of people. And that is this idea of circular economy. Um, here you can see some examples of what is actually the process for a tech company and what is the process for a product company that has physical elements. Another important role of technology is engagement. All of us need to be finding different angles to engage our clients. And here you have two examples of how this could be done also thinking about sustainability as part of this journey. These are examples that we all well know, but just by adding simple things as features to your product, you can actually engage your audiences to explain to them 
how they can make the most sustainable choice. An incredibly important and quite often undermined responsibility uh, and role at the same time of the tech sector is about equality. This is a quote from the United Nations University where they essentially explain how we have been developing what is called the skill premium where essentially there's a disparity between the different types of skill sets we're bringing to the table and that is something that we have now and we've always had as a role to be able to address. Being more equal and building teams that are actually looking into diversity as part of their success. Now moving on to responsibility and where the responsibility related to sustainability comes is the idea about the fact that we have so much money in the ecosystem. Tonight, today, there's going to be a winner that is going to get a lot of money and there's going to be companies that are going to be probably approached by all the VCs that are going to be judging you, asking, what would you like to get? When are you getting your seed round? When are you getting your Series A? This is an unprecedented time in terms of the amounts of money that are flowing into the space. But it also comes as a responsibility, because with all the money that would fall within the bank account that you are going to open for your business, you also have the responsibility to distribute these money in a way that it's not going to be building a further unequal and unsustainable planet uh, as the one that sadly we live on at the moment. Another responsibility is related to transparency. We all have been seeing on many different products, especially in Germany, for those of you that live in Germany, how some companies are starting to explain what are the CO2 emissions related to the things that they're doing. Well, the truth is, is that if you look at this statistic here, um, this is quite shocking in the sense that we sometimes even forget that we're growing a lot of things, we're eating a lot of things, we're throwing a lot of things, which we don't eat at 40% uh, waste, for example, for food, and we're making a lot of things that sometimes end up falling into the class of zero waste. Uh, in the sense that they would be falling within the, the, the group of products that would be not wasteful, but then you would have products such as single use or zero use as well. Another thing that is incredibly important is related to externalities. When we build products, when we build tech products, but also when we build physical products, we always kind of fall within the idea that we have a clear definition of what is sustainable and what it isn't, because marketing works, because we actually have been educating ourselves, but sometimes some elements within this analysis are missing. This example here is one that we widely know, uh, but maybe not in the full detail of it. How many of you have ever had a tote bag at a merchandise circumstance, maybe an event or so on, given to you? Come on, don't be shy. Well, I see quite a few of you. And when you look at this, the truth is, is that if you look at the equation only from an energy perspective, there's very little that falls under the idea that we maybe should be focusing on getting one of the reusable bags because obviously there's so much energy that is going into it. But then if you start diving into the details, it's about the amount of time something is used, it's about the time that actually the product is being put in circulation, and it's about the water that is being consumed. So when you're building products in the context that you're developing, always think of the circumstances that are going to lead to externalities. Because maybe, maybe your product is doing good for one side of the story, but then is damaging something else. And the final element that I think is quite important for all of you to think about is related to education. We are all building companies that quite quickly are growing from a business that is one person to 100. And by taking the chance to speak to your employees in an engaging manner about the topic of sustainability, you would be able to already build rapport and also responsibility within them, which makes your job easier. Because then, of course, you can kick off processes, you can kick off campaigns within the company, but you also would have these advocates that would feel a lot more fulfilled because you've aligned their values to your values. And now comes to maybe the most difficult part. Uh, where does this leave you? 
I know this is a lot of information and as someone that is a practitioner in the sustainability space, it's very convenient for me to be standing here in front of you and telling you how it's so important while you're battling to get maybe your first round to think about sustainability. The truth is, is that this is going to be a must and it's going to be something you need to think of today to prepare better for tomorrow because investors are asking for your ESG performance. There would be also plenty of customers asking you, did you think about this externality that I have? And what makes it easier is the fact that you don't need to do this alone. And you don't need to do this with the mindset that this is this overburdening thing that you patch up on top of the business model you've developed. The first thing you can do is working on innovation that is addressing climate change. For those of you that maybe are playing with some business models and are thinking about what am I going to be doing? I want to be working with AI. I want to be working on this kind of business model that is focused on B2C. Uh, well, maybe there's an angle that you can add sustainability to the topic and find this societal responsibility as part of the offer that you're making. The second thing is that if this offering to build a company that is related to climate change does not necessarily fall within the category that you're looking for, maybe at least focus on building companies that are useful. There's so many companies that are jumping on the hype and the idea that we need to be doing something cool that is within the space of one minute delivery or within the space of something that is related to better visualization of posts related to social media. All of these business models are valid as long as they actually are starting to redress an actual issue that our society faces. And honestly, by having worked now for five years in sustainability and green tech, I can tell you that there's so many problems that are left untackled just because we have historically been able to work with a lot of hype, but not always with the facts. The third thing that probably is going to be difficult for many to hear is that you should take money when you need them. The inflow of money that is at the moment in the VC uh, ecosystem that obviously trickles down to all of us getting uh, money is great, uh, but it's also coming with strings attached. The money that you get for your company should be there to support your growth but always with the responsibility of you actually building a company that delivers results that is useful and it's also hopefully good for society. Whatever the business model is, um, there's also a possibility, even if you're within any of a setup that maybe is not uh, fully clear to, to society why it's addressing climate change and so on, um, there's still the possibility for you to decide to give back. And what this means is essentially finding your angle to engage your employees, your customers, on this journey to be more sustainable, more responsible. We have a lot of exciting things that uh, have been you know, happening over the last few years. Uh, and I think the momentum that we have with all the societal responsibility is one that can put you at the forefront of a particular industry because there's still a lot of leadership position to be taken. One of the most important learnings that I've gathered over the last few years has been related to this collaborative element. Um, I think team is something that without which you're not going to be able to build a successful company, but also the team is one that and can act as a sparing partner whenever you are undecisive about what kind of responsibility you want to take. With this in mind, listen to your team and also consider how they fit within the whole value chain but also the value system that you're developing for your company. And finally, um, think of your success as one that is dependent on the whole ecosystem, all the stakeholders that you're connected to. There is no circumstance in which a company that is thinking of economy without considering planet is going to be ever successful in the long term. There's pressure coming from not only the regulators, but also investors and all other stakeholders because we now have enough data to know that the problem is there. You're building super exciting companies, and I've only looked at a bunch, uh, thanks to the fact that the Stage 2 team has given me the opportunity to see some of the final contenders. And I know that there is a massive burden on the shoulders of someone that is kicking off a company, that is thinking about it with a lot of passion. 
This is the best moment for you to think of yourself as a change maker, as someone that is responsible for the future of the planet, of our society. Technology is a phenomenal element that we can add to the solutions that we're developing. But if there's no responsibility within that, we're not going to be looking into a climate crisis, but just a humanitarian crisis that probably is possible to address if all of us work together. Thank you so much and good luck today.